and welcome. Here's Alex from Black Sheep IT Consulting. In uh, this demonstration, we are going to take a look at an alternative installation option for Siebel CRM, namely the pre-built containers from Oracle ARU, also known as Automated Release Update System, which is one of the container and cloud options for running a Siebel environment. So let's rehearse quickly what these options are and do check out our containerization and cloud module on the Siebel 23 plus workshop or the Siebel cloud manager module or both. You'll find links in the description of this video. So the first option opposed to a classic Siebel installation where you install anything using the MDE is build your own containers and that is facilitated by the Oracle Siebel GitHub repository which is also used in the option we discussed today, the pre-built containers. So basically instead of building your own containers and messing with Docker files or any other containerization tool, uh, you can use pre-built containers, just download them from Oracle and they have been made generally available as of 23.5. So they are on Oracle support along with the regular Siebel installers. And then you can deploy those containers in any of your preferred clouds or on premises. All you need is a host machine that runs the containerization technology of your choice. In this demonstration, we are going to use Docker. Uh, some of you might remember the OCI marketplace image, which used Jenkins and deployed a simple enterprise along with a sample database. So that was very intriguing if you wanted a sample database, but it's been retired for a long time now. The sample database will come back to in this video as it's included in the ARU option as well. So if you want the Siebel sample database badly, the only current option, well, actually one of two options, but if you want to run it on a local machine, then that's the ARU. What are the other two options listed on this overview slide? This is Siebel Cloud Manager, which well, would go into too much detail here, so do check out our module on Siebel Cloud Manager if you're interested. Basically, Siebel Cloud Manager automates the whole provisioning cycle, either of a greenfield deployment or even of an on-premises deployment and migrates it to OCI. But you're bound, as of the time of this recording, to Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So you have no choice of the cloud vendor if you use Siebel Cloud Manager at the time of this recording. Pure speculation, my side, it might change in the future. The target architecture of Cloud Manager is also different as it uses Kubernetes cluster to orchestrate the containers it creates automatically. And you configure your enterprise no longer directly through Server Manager or SMC, you do it with YAML files. So again, this is a big, big topic and we don't have time for this today as we'll focus on the ARU. So let's dive in. And what we have open here is the actual Siebel bookshelf guide at the time of recording for 23.7. And this Siebel Bookshelf Guide is included with Bookshelf since a few months and it's called Deploying Siebel CRM Containers. And it's one of the shorter guides, so it has an overall of 28 pages. That's not very much. And we shall go through this guide and recreate the environment uh, using the container option that was formerly known as ARU, the download location has actually changed when Oracle made this generally available. So here we are in chapter two of the Deploying Siebel CRM Containers Guide of the Siebel Public Bookshelf. 
and I'll jump right into performing prerequisite tasks because that's the chapter where the guy tells us to set up a Linux, Oracle Linux server on a virtual machine. Now it mentions Oracle Virtual Box, which you can use to host this virtual machine on your local laptop or desktop, but I shall use Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and generate an instance. So there will be a slight deviation from this guide, but still you can use any box you want. If it's capable of running Docker and a Linux box, it should be fine. So here I am in my uh, OCI tenancy and I shall create a new instance and let's stop that instance. container demo and well let's see what we can choose here Oracle Linux 8 should work fine but however I change the image to Oracle Linux 7.9 because it well cooperates better with the guide actually so uh, Oracle Linux 8 is a little bit different still it should work with any Linux that is capable of running docker and capable of supporting the requirements. So let's select that 7.9 image and let's beef up our shape here a little bit uh, with four OCPUs. We should be fairly fine. It's just a simple enterprise. Mind you that a Siebel database container will be created so we have to accommodate an Oracle database enterprise edition and we have to accommodate at least one Siebel server AI and Cloud Gateway. So the networking is fine for my purposes here. Uh, we need a public key for SSH, got one here. And we need a bit larger of machine, not a 50 gigabyte is too small for all the stuff we're going to download. So let's make it 200 gigabyte for the initial boot volume, which is our disk. Okay, so let's create this. And well, we shall come back when the machine is operational. So the machine is running and it has got a public IP address as requested. So I'll copy that and I'll use that IP address to create a putty entry and do the first connection. So let's run putty. I have a template here ready. And let's call this container demo. And let's open it and say yes. And we can log in to the shell. So the default user for Oracle Public Cloud, as it was formerly, uh, is still OPC. And we are in the public key work just fine. So let's review the prerequisites that we shall do on this machine. So here it says create a virtual machine. Okay, we check on this. We have Oracle Linux 7, we don't need to download it. We have used Oracle Cloud. Uh, password for the root user, we skip that. We also skip the administrative user because we have OPC, obviously. And OPC already, already has sudo access. So that's taken care of. Uh, we don't need to restart. We have logged in as OPC. So step six is considered done. And then there are several steps in the guide where you should take a snapshot of the machine. But it's a little bit early for that since we just set up on OCI, literally. And since we are using an OCI image, we also don't have to worry about uh, the permissive mode for SE, Linux or the YUM repository. So we can go straight forward to the important first step, get Docker or your preferred containerization engine. And of course here it's Docker. 
So let's execute that command. So I just switch to side-by-side -side mode. Let's run that first command and, well, that looks like it's downloading stuff and we shall come back once Docker is installed. Okay, it says complete, so now we have to, well, start the Docker service and make sure it's enabled for automated start. So let's run these two commands. Okay, and now there's another command to get the demo user to use Docker. And since our demo user is not demo admin, we just assign that to OPC. So now it should actually work to use to do a Docker version. Yes, Docker 19.3 is installed. Fine. The next step in the host machine is to make sure you have Git because you will pull stuff from GitHub, the Oracle Siebel repository. So another yum command to install Git. That should be fairly fast. Yeah, it's already done. Now we do not need to restart that really, so we do a Git version. And we get the version number back, so we are good with that. Uh, we're not using VirtualBox, so no additions here. And now it's download time. Download the Siebel container images from ARU. So if you are ARU user, you know what to do and download that. But you can also download them from Oracle support as a zip file very much like the MDE installer, you have a separate container zip file for each version of Siebel. So let's see, I have downloaded the image and it's a zip file. You, uh, the guide mentions one of two and two of two. One of two is just a readme file, so I didn't download that. And it says to unzip these files. Now that's fair easy enough, so let's run unzip on that. And we see that it contains two tar gzipped folders, uh, one deploy db19c and one Siebel folder for the version you chose, 23.7 in my case. Now these folders, as they are created by unzipping, that's exactly as it should be for an upcoming step. Uh, we can get rid of the uh, zip file if you want to save some space. Okay, so now we just have the two folders and a checksum file. So we are doing a from scratch deployment. At this point you might have a database already you want to use, either a fresh install of Siebel database 23 dot something or an upgraded database, um, for example, using the upgrade factory uh, or any existing database or copy of it. So in our case, we pretend we don't have a database. So we need Oracle database enterprise edition plus a Siebel database image. The database image is actually delivered with the container image. It's, it's that deploy db um, zip file, more or less, and we will deploy that into the Oracle database server. That, and of course the Oracle database server will be run in a container as well. So the uh, Oracle uh, the bookshelf guide has the necessary steps. So we shall log into the Oracle container registry. Actually you log in with your Oracle account, your Oracle single sign-on account, and you have to accept the license agreement. You have to do this only once. I already done it, but I, for good measure, I just show how it works. 
So I click the link and now I'm in the Oracle Container Registry, which is an interesting place, by the way. You not only find the Oracle database, but also, as you can see, other Oracle products to run as containers, to actually pull the containers and use them to your liking. So in our case, we go to database and we want the Enterprise Edition. And here it says, well, 21.c is, is not the one we use. We're going to use 19c. And it says, please sign in using your Oracle account to accept the license agreement. So you cannot pull it before you accept the agreement. So I'm logging in with single sign-on. So I'm logged in, select English. Oh, I it says to me, I already accepted that. So that's fine in case you have never accepted a license agreement on the Oracle Container Registry, now's the time to do so. And here's a pull command. And the guide actually also has a pull command for us. So first we have to use Docker login. Okay, a prompt for the username. And password. Okay, that's bad. Yeah, I guess um, a log out and log in should do. So let's exit that shell. And I logged in one more time. Let's try this again. That's better. So just in case you see the same error as I did, you have to log out and log back in to get your Docker privileges right. And now time to do the Docker pull. And as you can see, the ARU guide suggests we use 19.3, which is just fine for our purposes. And well, it's pulling and that uh, will take a short while and we'll come back once it's done. All right, just took a little while to download or pull the Oracle database container from the Oracle container registry. And again, as we mentioned, you might not need this step as you already have an Oracle database or even a Siebel database and you would just connect to that later. Uh, for now, we just verify with Docker images that there is the Docker image ready to use. So what's the next step? The next step is actually to create images from the tar gzip files that we have extracted previously using the docker load command. So let's try this. We are, of course, make sure you're in the correct folder. Here we are. And let's use docker load and we use the Siebel file as input. So that's the Siebel image that will then be used to set up the Siebel server gateway or AI containers. It's one image for all since the MDE, that's of course one of the main advantages of the modular deployment engine, only one Siebel image for all purposes. And again, that's a big, a big one, so it will probably take a while and I'll be back when the job is done. Okay, and it's done. Notice that it extracts the Docker images to localhost store Oracle Siebel. That's important for later. And since we are very looking very much looking forward to using the original Siebel sample database in Oracle format, we have to, of course, repeat that Docker load for the deploy DB file, which contains the packaged Siebel sample database ready for pushing, well, deploying it into a pluggable database. 
and again we'll come back once this is done and we're done already so let's do another docker images and see we now have three images one for running the Siebel instances one for deploying the sample database and one for the Oracle database engine more or less so next task for us is creating the directories for persistence volumes that store the container configurations now that's a lot to digest if you're new to containers uh, persistence volumes or PV are the main vehicle for making sure that any volatile stuff that's in your container uh, think of maybe uh, the zookeeper uh, persistence layer the zookeeper files when you change a Siebel configuration this and the zookeeper files are inside the container whenever you ex you change the container for example during an update to the next higher Siebel version you lose your configuration so any configuration that has a persistence characteristic has to be stored outside the container and that outside is simply a volume or a folder uh, that we will create now so we'll create actually two main folders one for the oracle database if, again if you have a database already you don't need to do this and one for each enterprise you want to host you could theoretically or practically host multiple Siebel enterprises on the same machine uh, that's not really uh, clever so we don't do it but you create one folder for the enterprise and as subdirectories to that folder you will create the persistence folders for each and every machine so if you plan to run a gateway cluster for example uh, might be prudent to have cloud gateway one two three SA123, SES123, and so forth, and one Siebel file system. We keep things simple here, so we just stick to the plan outlined by the guide using, well, make directory. Let's do this as root. And create a persistent folder first. and then go there okay let's do a let's open it up for everybody since this is a demo environment anyway and now let's create that oracle folder uh, make sure if you don't really modify the files that you will download from git get that much uh, to keep these original and uppercase folder names things get much easier at especially the first time you do it later on you won't want to modify things and let's do a change mod here as well now let's go down to the enterprise folder and create the four folders for cloud gateway SAI application interface SES for Siebel server and SFS for the file system and we just make sure they're accessible for everything okay let's take a look looks uh, well enough so let's go back to our demo user or OPC in my case so now the uh, we're getting closer to actually seeing uh, Siebel running and uh, we are now about to download the scripts from github so where actually do you download those let's take a look
So if you go to github.com slash Oracle Siebel, you will find the Oracle Siebel GitHub repository. So configuring Siebel, that's the repository you would like to download. Remember, we installed Git and so we can use the Git command. So here with the code, we can just use the We can just use the git clone command as indicated in the guide. But what's in here, it's much easier to see it here in, in the browser. So the containerization docker folder is what we're interested in. There's an oracle, there's an e readme file which you might want to read. And this is the option that we discussed at the beginning of this presentation. Remember when we talked about building your own containers. So if you follow the readme just on GitHub and use the Docker files provided in this repository, you're building your own containers. So we are bypassing this step, but still the guide refers to the files in this repository. So we will still use them, but we use them to set up the existing containers. So go down to Oracle Linux, you will find classic MDE, which is the newer version for modular deployment engine. Again, there's a bit of README. And if you look into manage and scripts, you'll find an automate architecture folder with a launch Siebel folder. And that's the one that we will use following the bookshelf guide. And as you can see, it has quite a few things to consider and we'll talk about this in due course but first let's oh, create that folder as indicated a Siebel folder it is just to hold that uh, what we download through git clone okay and yeah takes uh, a few moments and then we change the directory let's copy that so now we can open that launch Siebel directory down that lengthy path and in this directory, there is one file, which is an example file. Actually, there are two many example files. Uh, one is ARU architecture. It's not mentioned in the guide. Uh, the guide mentions the sample architecture 19 SH file. And copy either of, either of these files. Um, the guide says to copy the files and create the file following your naming convention, such as seep end sh. So basically the main setup file for the end Siebel enterprise. So let's just copy the sample architecture 19 to seep end sh. Oh, my bad. There we go. And let's open it. So, well, there's um, quite a few parameters. We need to make sure they're correctly set as indicated by the guide. You don't have to worry about all of the parameters right now. You just have to worry about PV. Remember, that's the persistence volume you created. So we've done some copy pasting here, um, not showing because don't want to waste your time here. So the root uh, parameter is the location of the automate architecture folder of the Git 
hub stuff that you downloaded. So make sure you get that right. Copy paste is your friend. As the PV parameter, I have my persistent folder. It's just to literally the root location of all the folders you created. Container base is important as well because it's the same we have seen with the Docker images, where the Docker images are. Remember localhost slash store slash Oracle Siebel, deviating a little bit from the guide which says store Oracle Siebel. And then there's the domain and um, the recommendation is to use company.com, which is a fake domain, which will be used to set up the initial certificates for TLS. Uh, later on, you might want to change the certificates, but we just want to get going with a sample environment. So company.com is just fine. So now, of course, we have to delete the files, delete the lines, duplicate. So the other parameters are the first enterprise called ENT, database host is going to be called Oracle 19C, there's the database port, the database instance is going to, going to be sample, the TNS connection string or alias will be SiebelDB, Docker, the Docker network will be called SiebelNet, and then there's a bunch of usernames and ports, uh, the table owner will be Siebel, port 443 for the AI, user as admin, password, default password. So you might want to change that all. The, in the first part, on the first script we run, only the first few parameters will be used. And then there's a second script actually generating the enterprise where the other part of this file will be used, namely the usernames, passwords, and port numbers, component groups, and so forth. So. We have made all the changes necessary uh, to get an initial enterprise with call center, Siebel web tools, and EAI component groups already enabled once the enterprise is provisioned. But we don't, at this time, we don't even have uh, Docker machines to run. We don't have uh, any containers that are running. That's going to change in just a moment. So let's make sure we save these changes. And now we run the start all command. So we follow the lead of the bookshelf guide. Start all 19. Then your version. So here's an example how to run that. The version in our case is 23.7. And then the main configuration file. So the file we just generated. So this script, and you might want to inspect that, it will launch four containers as indicated in the guide as well. It will launch the database first. So basically it checks, does it exist or not? And if not, it will create the container. Database container creation will take a while and then it will subsequently generate three Siebel containers, one AI, one Cloud Gateway and one Siebel server and yeah, law, start them all. That's what the script says, start all. So let's see how this works out. So we can see it starts with the database and it has issued a docker run command with the port numbers, the information from the sh file. So you can see it's doing something and that will take a few minutes before we see any further progress because it, it waits for the database to be completely instantiated. Mind you, it's a brand new container, so the database will be instantiated and it's empty, so it doesn't have any Siebel tables in it. It's an empty Oracle database. However, the Siebel environment is starting as well, but the enterprise, of course, is not provisioned yet. So it's the pre-bootstrap state of Siebel that you will see. So yeah, we'll check back in a few moments. So as we can see on 
the screen. So it has finished uh, setting up the database initially, and then it went along and started the container for the cloud gateway, the container for the SCS, and one container for the AI. And that we can see, it has, it has run the command docker ps, but we shall just clear the screen and run the docker ps. So we can see that there is indeed a Siebel Enterprise Server Cloud Gateway SAI image up and healthy, and the database is up and healthy. Uh, the database does not yet contain any Siebel database, uh, Siebel tables or whatever, so we have to fix that, and that's actually the next step. But before, before we go to the next step, let's check on that AI it exposes port 443, so let's just see if we can connect to that machine. So we take that IP address, and uh, then we just, the IP address of the host machine, and then we just go for Siebel slash Siebel slash SMC. It tries for HTTP, but it should actually be HTTPS. So let's do a new tab. Okay, it says our connection is not private. That's because of the certificate is actually a self-signed certificate. That's fine. And we have an SMC responding. Let's see if we can log in. So the question is, is it bootstrapped or not? So we remember that as admin password from one of the files and welcome one it was. And we can't get in with that because the enterprise is not yet bootstrapped. So we have to use the primordial user and the username for that is as admin in lowercase so it's hidden in one of these files from GitHub. And sadmin in lowercase as the password. Uh, that will get us in, but prompt us for the bootstrap. And we will not manually bootstrap the enterprise. There is a script for that. So, uh, but it's a good proof that the AI, at least, <laughs> is healthy enough to support the Siebel SMC. So let's close that tab. And let's get on with the next step, which is actually, well, drop, <laughs> drop in. <laughs> the script name is drop, so don't worry, it's not dropping a database, it's dropping a database into <laughs> a database server. So that's into a location. So the first thing we do is get to actually get one folder up, automate architecture, and get to that db folder and as a file drop db19 which we shall inspect and that file has parameters for the database file location now the database file location is using the persistent folder now our persistent folder is just persistent without the scratch and it doesn't have a PV folder so that should be a correct path we'll we'll validate that let's validate it right now so let's go to persistent ORCL19 and there is a folder created by the setup ORCL CDB, the container database. So that looks that looks correct. So let's go back into the drop file. And then there's the database path, which is okay, which is the path on the database container. No, don't no need to change that. And also the database connect is fine. Notice you can glean the sys password from here. Yeah, and it connects to the local database. And that's it. So 
I think we're good with that script. And now we can run the script. So we do a bash. Well, first we do a Docker images. That's step three in the guide. And the Docker images tells us our deploy database folder is localhost store oracle siebel deploy db 19c sample okay let's copy that and let's use it in a bash command so we run the drop db 19 with that as the input followed by colon and the desired version number the version number we have 23.7 so it's basically the path to the image that you have extracted previously. Okay, let's run this. And it runs a temporary Docker image, which then will be used to, as you can see, it's already happening, um, copy over or insert or plug in the Siebel sample database into that Oracle instance. And again, that will take a few minutes. And once it's done, we'll come back to it. So we are back at the prompt at the shell. So it seems that the over, uh, there was an overall success of plugging in or dropping that database into the container database. And the final step is configuring Siebel CRM, which is uh, surprisingly short, <laughs> as you could either, as in indicated by the guide, you can configure the enterprise manually using SMC, uh, do the bootstrap and create profiles and so forth, or you can run a command, bash configure. Remember, we had a command to start all the containers using a copy of the script. So we're not using this one, we're using our copy. And now there's a configure script, which will, well, let's see what it does. So we go back here and go back into the launch Siebel folder. And there's the configure script, and there's our, let's just rehearse it, there's the seep end sh file we created. So for now, uh, any parameter down below enterprise will be used to set up, well, to bootstrap the um, cloud gateway, to create the zookeeper a registry, and so forth create profiles and deploy these profiles with all this information here. And uh, the server profile, as you can imagine, will have these three component groups selected. So the server is going to start up. And at the end of the whole process, we have a ready to use enterprise on a Siebel sample database. Okay, let's get out of here. And let's clear this one more time and run bash configure with our copy with our main configuration file okay what's going on here it's already doing stuff it's using curl to actually run rest commands against the cloud gateway so it has already um, yeah, started to deploy the enterprise actually. And it's pretty swift as you can see, it's creating a profile here for the Siebel server. And it's about to deploy that Siebel server. So all of this is going very fast. And you might want to watch out for the curl commands and especially for the return codes 200, which indicate a perfectly fine operation here. What you can also do is uh, open a second shell and just well sneak in, uh, take a peek what's going on, for example, with top. 
And since this is a Siebel server being deployed, we can actually see it as in the um, as a process here. The Sieb SVC definitely doing something with a gateway uh, with Zookeeper. And there's the we have just seen briefly flashing. Uh, there it is, the Siebel object managers, the server components coming up. So that server is already booting up and you see it's draining the database, reading the repository. Uh, what repository? Yes, we have, remember we have just dropped in the Siebel sample database 23.7 and of course, you wouldn't expect it, but of course it does, the, uh, the sample database delivered with the container image includes the current Siebel repository as of the release you chose, like 23.7. Uh, post install database setup is of course applied on this database as is the repository upgrade or actually the master repository is imported in that database. So it's all a carefree package, <laughs> so to speak, when you just want what we wanted as this demonstration reaches the end. Uh, we wanted a simple Siebel enterprise and the Siebel sample database so to we can revel in all the examples in the Siebel sample database like in the old Siebel days where the sample database was a local database either Oracle XE or Sybase if you remember the good old days but those days are over and now you have to go through a little bit more steps but if you have a machine which can accommodate a virtual machine with Oracle Linux and so you have seen the steps followed um, and I think it's already done so uh, let's check out the uh, environment that we created so here Now we can connect to the management console. And now we should be able to log in with the real S admin user. So welcome one as the password because it's fully bootstrapped. It has a database underneath and indeed there's a deployment with one enterprise, one Siebel server. And this is just because of the small screen we can see the full deployment we can inspect the application interface profile it's called CC web tools it has call center and web tools deployed because that's the component groups we choose it just deploys the absolute minimum to run and we can go for management and see how the server is doing yeah it's already coming back as running nice so let's check out for example the call center object manager going to app call center enu there we go and let's go full screen for this one so it's loading that's a Siebel application. That's a healthy and happy Siebel application. So, for example, let's check out technical support. Uh, comes back as 23.7 application version and repository version. So all that stuff that Oracle has created in the continuous release model is in that sample database. Is it really the sample database? Let's check out some accounts. Can already see the eye helps and there's the sample accounts that we all love there's all the sample data in there the for order management etc for your demos or evaluations so that's a sample database if there is any and for good measure let's just try out web tools because that's the second application that was deployed object manager is up let's log in
and I'm not stopping the video here, so I'm just this is real time on that 4 OCPU machine with 64 gig of RAM that I provision in OCI, which costs about 80 euros, euro dollars per month. Um, it's pretty fast, of course, and so the database has already returned a list of applets. Is this Siebel WebTools 23.7? Yes, because it has that SIF attribute, archive, attribute differences menu in the archive menu. Um, if you go to Tools New Object, you see the wizards as of 23.7. So, all right, ready to go and ready for your exploration, for your education, for your fun with the Siebel sample database. So thanks for watching this one. Take care and bye bye.